cold spot on the back of the iPhone. 26 degrees. This is hands down the best phone for gaming. Of course, the iPhone 13 Pro. And I say that for two different reasons. First of all, it's got the fastest mobile chip out there, the A15 Bionic with the five core GPU. And second, it's got 120 Hertz Pro Motion for the display technology. However, there is one major issue and that is heat. This thing gets incredibly hot while playing games, especially at 120 FPS like Genshin Impact and Pascal's Wager. And I came across a very interesting video by Golden Reviewer who played Genshin Impact at 120 FPS on this phone and he said it only lasted about 10 seconds before it came down to 60. And because of that, we decided to buy this. This is the Razer phone cooler specifically made for the iPhone because of this very special feature. Check this out. MagSafe. Yes, the Razer phone cooler has MagSafe connectivity to the iPhone 12 and 13 lineups, which is why we decided to buy this one because we never bought one before, but MagSafe is such a big deal because it's so convenient. You don't have to clip it onto the sides or anything. Bam, it's on. And basically the way it works is you connect the power cable and you flip the switch and the fan turns on and it also has customizable RGB lighting which you can fully customize within the Razer phone cooler app. And I do wanna mention that this is not sponsored in any way. We literally bought this because we thought it was so cool because of that MagSafe connectivity to the iPhone. So what I'm gonna do in this video is play a couple games both with and without the cooler to see if there are any differences in FPS or temps. I got my Seek thermal camera right here. So I'm gonna be checking out the temps on the back of the iPhone after each gaming session. And the way I'm gonna measure the FPS is by using Perf Dog, which basically checks the statistics and FPS, including the CPU usage, memory usage, basically all the stats, but namely the FPS, which is what we wanna see. And we're gonna try to see how long it sticks up to 120 FPS within those games. So without further ado, I'm gonna set this guy off to the side and I'm gonna play a 10 minute run of Genshin Impact and we're gonna measure the average FPS and everything else. And we're about to jump into the game and there you go, I'm gonna turn on the Perf Dog recording just like that and I can show you guys the graphic settings. Go over here and you can see I've set everything to the lowest except for 120 that I have enabled and yep, I'm checking. I am hitting 120 right now in Perf Dog. So there you go. And the reason I'm using a cable is because you need the cable with Perf Dog to hit 120 FPS so you can record and measure it. And right off the bat, we've already dropped down to 60. It's been sticking to 60 for, oh, there you go, just jump back up to 120, so I guess that's nice. 115, 119, there you go. Not too bad. So basically, I'm gonna play this for a little while and check back in with you guys to talk about any kind of heat or any drops or anything like that. And by the way, I started at 133, so at 143 is when I'm gonna stop this recording. All right, it's only been three minutes, but I already feel the back of the phone getting pretty hot, definitely getting hot, and now, whoo, let's get this guy. Now I'm sticking to a pretty consistent 60 ever since I felt that heat in the back, so it's not looking good. I mean, imagine you buy this phone expecting to play games at 120 FPS, and you can't, it's just getting hot. All right, so it's almost been 10 minutes, and man, the back of the phone is really hot, but it is still jumping between 60 and 120, on that chart, so not too bad, but I am seeing it now dip a little bit, sometimes even to like 57, but then it jumps back to 120. It makes no sense. Honestly, I don't know why it can like, it can't fluctuate in between 120 and 60. It just jumps straight up and down. It's kind of weird, but the back of this phone is really, really hot right now. And there you go, it's been exactly 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording. Oh, and just like that, I don't know if you guys just saw that, the display, <laughs> just dimmed after our testing finished. So, wow, it dimmed quite a bit too. I don't know if you could tell, but definitely dimmed. So right now I'm gonna test out the heat on the back with my thermal camera on this iPhone. So let's go ahead and record this. As you guys can see, we have a hot spot right over there, 43 degrees Celsius. That must be where the A15 is at because man, that is hot. And now it's time to put on the Razer phone cooler right on the back. As easy as that with MagSafe. Let's flip that switch. There you go, it's on. And I don't know if you guys can hear that fan, 
but it is pretty loud. So let's see if it's doing anything. I just got in, just started recording. 148, so 10 minutes from now, I'm gonna stop this measurement and testing. And I can already feel a little bit of wind from that cooler. It's working pretty well. There you go, we're up to 120. Oh, and even with the cooler, it just dropped down back to 60. I did not expect that. It's like I got this cooler on, it's not overheating. Why is it going down to 60? It makes no sense. Okay, there you go, 120. So it stayed up at 120 for a good amount of time, but then it jumped back down again. Doesn't make sense, like why it keeps going back. I guess the real test is gonna be when we examine the chart right after this is done. I'm gonna take a look at that chart and see if we get a higher average FPS. That's gonna be the real, I guess, proof of this working or not. Okay, that was a long stretch of 60, back to 120 again. So far, guys, I'm not impressed. I'm looking at this chart, still staying at 60 for a good minute, man. Now it's back to 120, pretty decent. Staying at 120, oh, never mind. <laughs> so it's been about six minutes, and there is a huge difference that I'm noticing. The phone is nowhere near as hot. Like, literally, it's barely warm because of this cooler. This is actually very surprising, and it seems to be working extremely well. However, just something is wrong with the FPS, like just stays at 60 for extended periods of time, even though the phone doesn't feel even warm, so I don't know what's going on here. Man, this definitely feels cool. So one thing I know for sure is if you had issues with dimming or overheating before, you're not gonna have them right now. Yeah, guys, it's been almost 10 minutes. The phone feels really cool, I'm impressed. All right, there you go, it has been 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the recording. And with that said, let's check the temps. Holy moly, you guys seeing this? Look at that, I got a cold spot that was 26 degrees right where the cooler was, and the hottest spot is now only 38 degrees. Look at that, it's starting to heat up first, but it was 26 degrees right on the back of the phone. As you can see, now it's starting to warm up a little bit, and now the hot spot is finally getting a little bit warmer. From 43 to 36, the hottest spot. That is so, so impressive. This little thing, let's see that. Look how cold the back of the cooler is. <laughs> 10 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. Like, look, my table's 23, 9 degrees Celsius, 8 degrees Celsius on the cooler. It is doing work. And so now that we've proven that the cooler is actually doing a great job of lowering the temps, which is gonna stop your phone from dimming, it's gonna stop it from throttling in certain games, let's actually look at the FPS charts right here on perfdog. .wetest.net. I have both of them open side by side. And without the cooler playing Genshin for about 10 minutes, we averaged 75.6 FPS. And going down to the CPU usage, 18.7% average. So essentially we have 75.6. And now let's go over to the cooler gaming session. 77.6 FPS exactly two FPS higher after getting this Razer phone cooler, which is definitely disappointing. And I honestly think that there's something wrong with how it handles 120 FPS gaming because it was noticeably more cool. And going down to CPU, oh, look at that, 19.9%. So I guess it was throttling less because the average CPU usage is higher. And maybe that's where we're getting the extra two FPS average, but man, that is not what I was expecting, especially with those thermal differences. And I do wanna mention that without the cooler, after about 10 minutes, the display did actually dim down, which would lead to a much worse gaming experience compared to with the cooler, it was staying cool and there was no dimming in sight, which that is definitely a benefit, even if you're not getting that much better FPS. Man, these results are so disappointing because I don't think it's doing the 120 FPS properly, so I was actually just gonna play this game, but I think I'm gonna test out one more game that supports 120 FPS and I'm gonna see if we get a better advantage there. And now let's jump into Pascal's Wager, which as you can see has 120 FPS support right there. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the game. And with that said, let's hit record 232. So at 242, we'll be done. All right, right off the bat, we're having the same issue. 
60 FPS does not want to go up to 120. Really weird. Oh, there you go. Once again, I'm feeling this heat up, so... Whoa, I think I just saw the display dim. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but... I think the display just dimmed. It's been about five minutes in. Oh, it just dimmed like mad. You guys seeing this? I can almost like not even see this display. What is going on? Insanely hot on the back of this thing. All right, there you go. It's been 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and turn off this FPS recording just like that. And now it's time to check the temps. All right, this is the moment of truth. Flip it over. What do we got? 43, 44 degrees Celsius right there on the back. Look, even the table where it was is warm. 43 degrees Celsius, just like before, even went up to 44 at times. You could definitely see a little circle right there of heat where those max safe magnets are. 44 degrees, man, that's hot. And with that said, let's go ahead, toss on the Razer cooler. Just like that, max safe, super convenient. Turn it on and let's hit record. 2.46, so 10 minutes from now. All right, still sticking to a pretty good 120. It's actually impressive. I wonder if it's based off like the, the location or something, I don't know, but. So it's been staying at a pretty good 120 this time, interestingly. Phone still feels very cool compared to without the cooler, man, it gets so hot. Alrighty, there you go. It's been 10 minutes with the Razer cooler. Let's go ahead and pause that and let's check the temps. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's pop it off. Move it over, flip it. Oh, look at that cold spot on the back of the iPhone. 26 degrees. Are you kidding me? Did you see that cold spot? And as far as the hottest point, only 36 degrees Celsius on the iPhone, just like last time, compared to 44 without this Razer cooler. This is super, super impressive. Once again, look at that, 11 to 10 degrees Celsius on the back, like, dude, this thing's cold. It is legit, like, cold. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the charts for Pascal's wager. All right, and here we are on the Perf Dog website. This is the 10 minute run without the cooler. We're looking at an average FPS of 90.7, CPU usage at 11.9%. So 90.7, and here's the moment of truth. How much FPS did we get with the Razer phone cooler. This is 60 bucks, it's pretty expensive, but let's see if it's worth it. 100 average FPS. Hey, that is an improvement, man. 100 average from the 90. It's not that big of a difference, but the difference in the cooling alone is incredible because with the first 10 minute run without the cooler, the display dimmed multiple times, and at one point it got so dim that you could hardly see the game and that's very important with this kind of game because it's pretty dark itself naturally. So lots of dimming, lots of overheating, but with the cooler, man, it was staying so cool. Instead of 44 degrees Celsius, the hottest point on the back, it was at 36 and you guys saw that blue cool spot. Wow, that is incredible. I've got to say, this thing is nice because first of all, MagSafe. You can't beat MagSafe, it just pops on. You don't need to crimp it on with any kind of holders on the edge, nothing. Literally, it's just so convenient. So I'd say, if you were gonna buy any phone cooler out there, this one is the one to buy for the iPhone 12 series or the iPhone 13 series because of that MagSafe. And as you guys saw, we actually got some pretty decent results. So I've gotta say that if you're a mobile gamer and you're suffering from display dimming or overheating of any kind, You've gotta get this thing. This is probably the best phone cooler because of the MagSafe feature. So if you enjoy this video, definitely check out the links below to the Razer phone cooler if you wanna check this out and buy one for yourself. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead, click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.